Hello and welcome to Simply Watch Talks. This is your host Mosti. I received this Casio G-Shock GBD200 a few days ago and I'm very excited to talk about it with you guys. We'll check out the watch build quality, the features, the dimensions and wearability. And last but not least, the pros and cons. By the way, if you are interested in this watch, I'll leave a few links for price suggestions in the video description. On Amazon, this watch costs 140 USD. The Casio G-Shock GBD200 is a classic digital watch with some smart watch features. I don't know about you, but I don't really care about smart watches in general. So these features are not for me personally, but there is still a lot of stuff this G-Shock is doing very good. The build quality of the G-Shock GBD200 is great, and that is expected. The square resin case feels very solid. I love the Oreo style design that was applied by adding a white accent in the middle of the blue case. I like that they replicated the same white accent to the side buttons, which shows attention to detail. They also made the run button orange instead of white to differentiate it from the rest. The case back is stainless steel and held with four screws like most G-Shocks. We have two plastic strap holders in black that kind of extend from the case and cover where it links with the rubber strap. I think this helps with comfort, but I have a few concerns that I'll leave for the pros and cons section. I was surprised with the quality of the strap. It feels really good and has these perforations for better breathability. It also has this nice texture, not smooth, but rather sandstone-like, if that makes any sense. If you put the strap through the strap holder, it will go nowhere. The clasp is made from plastic. We'll get back to that in a second. I didn't expect the watch face to look like this when I purchased this watch, but it kind of exceeded my expectations. We have a central light button that triggers two LED lights with good luminescence. But the star of the show for me is the display. Those of you who follow this channel for a while know that I like my digital displays big and crisp. The Casio G-Shock GBD200 display is amazing and the mineral glass crystal is a negative display. And we all know how bad negative displays can perform sometimes, but not this one. In the timekeeping mode or main screen, the numbers and letters are big and crisp. If you can't easily tell the time using this watch, maybe it's time to get your eyes checked by a doctor. Not only that, but I can tell the time from the most acute angles. We know it's not really a given, and here you can see what I'm talking about when I put this watch next to my G-Shock GWM5610U. If you're lazy like me, great news, you don't even have to turn your wrist to tell the time. Do you engage in any water-related activities? If you do, good for you. This watch can handle it with its 200 meters of water resistance. If you don't, it's alright, you can still press that like button instead. I really appreciate it. All right, so what features does this watch offer? Some classic and some new. We'll start with the timekeeping mode. I really like its simplicity. It shows only what I need, time, date, and day. When I press the mode button, it takes me to the workout mode where I can program multiple workout sets. I press the mode button again to get to the stopwatch feature, which only counts in seconds. So no tens or hundreds of seconds for us today. The third mode button press shows the monthly activity with the amount of workouts, distance and pace. What makes this possible is the accelerometer that's inside the module, which allows this watch to calculate steps and pace based on your movement. And one last press of the mode button gets us to the notification screen. This is basically where we can check our notifications, a feature that I'm not really interested in, but it's here if you need it. If at any time I want to go back to the main screen, all I need to do is press the back button and I find that feature pretty neat. I can change the display of the watch by pressing the display button. The second display shows the daily steps with the time and date at the bottom. The third display shows the monthly distance with the time and date at the bottom. And the fourth screen shows the double time zone, which you can set by long pressing the display button. In the settings, I can set up pretty much everything, including the world time function, the sound and vibration feature, and Bluetooth pairing feature because this watch can connect to your phone for the smart watch features as well as to get the most accurate time directly from your phone which is similar to radio control G-Shocks. Lastly, I can press the orange button to get to the running watch face that shows a stopwatch, distance and pace readings. This watch face can be customized in many different ways. I'm not going to go in detail in this video but I'm planning on releasing a full feature breakdown video soon to subscribe if you'd like to get notified when that drops. Now to the dimensions and wearability. How does this watch wear for a six and a quarter inch wrist? The Casio G-Shock GBD200 is a big watch. Not gonna lie, that got me a bit nervous. 
It's roughly 13.5 mm thick, 45.5 mm in diameter and around 49 mm lug to lug. It does wear decent on my 6 and a quarter inch wrist. Maybe it's just copium, but I like how it wears. These digital sport watches are forgiving in terms of dimensions in my opinion, so it is allowed for them to be a bit oversized. What do I like about this watch? The display, obviously. I love how legible it is under all reasonable lighting conditions. Here it is under low light, and as you can see, you can still comfortably tell the time. I like the strap, it is very breathable. I took this watch for a run and I didn't notice its size at all. I like the button layout. I prefer it over the hard to press stainless steel buttons of my GW M56-10U. I also like the running feature because it helps me keep track of my sessions. What do I not like so much? This watch has a vibration feature, but it doesn't allow to use it for alarms, which is a bummer. The notification feature is useless to me. I tried it, but I don't like that it shows all my notifications, even things that are not that interesting to me. I disabled the connectivity features as this watch only advertises 2 years of battery life and I want to stretch that as much as possible. The plastic thingies that link the case to the strap help with wearability, but sometimes they catch my wrist hairs and I imagine they will build up some garbage with time, so they will need some cleaning every now and then. Lastly, the plastic clasp is just cheap and clunky. I would prefer a stainless steel clasp given that the clasp is usually the weakest point of the strap especially in a sports watch. With that being said, I'm pretty satisfied with this watch. Again, I don't really care for the smart features. I just love the legibility of the screen, the comfort and some extra workout features that I might use 3 times a week. I think it's worth the price, but I don't think it's gonna replace my G-Shock GW M56-10U. That one is just too compact and easy to use but it is definitely my workout watch from now on. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know by leaving a like and also consider subscribing for more awesome videos in the future. If you are a fan of G-Shocks, check out these two videos of my favorite G-Shocks here and here. Thank you for watching.